like, I don't, I, I kind of heard your conversation with that guy who's like, he's like a street preacher, like he does abortion little stuff. And I, I like, I, I try not to accuse you guys of anything. I've just always seen this, like, this, it's almost like, you're not with us unless you wear the t-shirts. And I'm not saying that's exactly what you're saying. That's not what I mean, right? Um, like, I know you're trying to make people less apathetic. I just, I've, I, like, I've, I've seen, I've, like, and, like, I actually I, think we have. Sorry? I actually think we have made people less less, apath- less apathetic. I, I, I agree. Even if you look I like agree. at the end abortion now stuff, <clears throat> like that is direct fruit from abolitionist agitation. Uh, I, I, I agree. I, I, okay. Right. So, um, um, so and I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that it would have happened like that mm-hmm. if we had just been like, hey, can we I, come and sit down and yeah, get I information? Understand. I don't think I it would have happened. I am uh, I'm from Canada where yeah. like they really want to arrest you fast. Okay. <laughs> So that's that. what heard. So like, yeah, I'm scared. It's true. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's not the point. Actually, you know, Justin uh, Germain. Uh, no, no. Um, so, do you guys know the Center for Bioethical yeah. Whatever? Like, yeah. they use similar tactics, but they're okay with like, they're okay with like ecumenism, right? With Roman Catholics. Oh, incrementalist, ecumenical, oh, yeah, regulationist. See, yeah. yeah. So I guess the only one thing is, okay. So actually, that's a good question. I have a serious question about incrementalism. Obviously, the goal would be to end it immediately. But in the meantime, I know, and I and like trust me, I know that like there's like the laws that are passed usually don't prevent anything. In Canada, there are no laws. You can you can go get a nine month old baby aborted immediately, and there's no loopholes that they need to jump through or anything. Canada's insane, right? And but like, but we hide it. There's like one abortion clinic in Edmonton where I'm from, right? And it's called like Women's Health Options. Like it's vague, right? It's not like Planned Parenthood, right? Anyway, just a side on side track, right? And um, I'm just if there's things that we can do in the meantime, like even just like even just like street evangelists preaching the gospel to people, making disciples. In the long run, that is through God's sovereignty. Is that not preventing abortion? No, right, right. So like, I think so you may have a misunderstanding of immediatism and incrementalism. Yeah, maybe. Um, what it is is like the abolitionist. Obviously, not everyone in in your movement is as articulate as you, as and properly representing yourself. I have lost Which is true of like right. every local yeah, church. Exactly, right? Yeah, no, yeah, no, right? So, so I just talked about it. So even talking to those guys as a, like, like, like other people on Facebook as a representation of she's what gonna you're going to tell she's me at Walmart. She's might not even be go. proper, no, right? Right, yeah. I'm sure there's people I, that have presented have found, as though it's like overnightism. You can't take any steps this, whatsoever. Like just the amount of like attacking of, say, uh, you know, uh, someone like an apologist like James White who in the apologist community is basically extremely frowned upon, like he will never go to those gigantic conferences or anything because he refuses. He actually does, he was in G3. Oh, G3, <laughs> I wouldn't call that That's huge. Yeah. yeah, well. That's huge. But what I'm saying is, is like, you look at someone like Ravi Zacharias, who refuses to call Rome apostate. James White does that. He takes those unpopular opinions. But what I've seen from AHA people, I don't know how else to put it, is just this attack of him like he's just in search of popularity. Well, I do not feel that he is. <laughs> right? The, cool, the good question is, where did that attack start? He attacked first. We're answering. We're trying to correct misinformation. We're trying to clarify his misrepresentation of like immediatism and incrementalism, okay. which was a complete misrepresentation. Okay. He's known for like knowing his opponent's position well and re- yeah. representing it right. Right? He totally didn't do that on his I don't. Line, so. I do not think he has studied you guys. He That's has. True. I agree. So what he's done is he has taken the word of other people who has spread misinformation, okay. and he's repeated it over and over. And he's slanderously accused so, a woman, a man who will be here today, who had moderated one of his debates nine years ago. Okay. And well, it's a long story. I told you yesterday it took like thirty minutes, but that's okay. <laughs> Is that you the guy? Online, look at Sorry. You can go online and get all that information. Yeah. Uh, which one are you talking about? Yeah. All of it. The open James letter White, from Jeff uh, Kangas to James Jamie White. Hall, everybody. Well, oh, yeah. I mean, no, I know. I won't. Yeah, done. JD Hall, yeah. You start there, you're gonna get all kinds of misinformation. Wait, wait, wait. I bet he watches it. Hi, JD. 
Yeah, yeah he probably will. He'll probably like do a, a blog about You're how still I'm an imposter or something. I stand by what I say. <laughs> so, anyway, okay, so did, did you want to like? Did you have a question about immediatism? Well, you well, well, you brought it up. You know, like, well, I, mean, I think I brought it up actually, but like. Yeah, so like when I say, when I talk about like preaching the gospel, people being saved, obviously we all agree that's a good thing, but like some of the answers that I've got from people online are very much like, well, I've seen, I've seen tons of Christians at abortion clinics, and I was like, this guy, specifically this guy I'm talking to, does not understand how salvation works, right? He doesn't understand that you were born again and you are changed by the gospel, <laughs> that a believer would not go kill their baby. But they're, right? They're coming out of the American. Yeah, they're coming out of Orthodox churches. <coughs> yeah, yeah, no. They're coming out of churches that teach the right gospel. I'm not going to And so, here, I know, huh? oh, yeah. here's what I'm, here's, here's the thing. Toby, yeah. smile for Josiah. What's up, man? I don't mean to interrupt. Yes, no, I do. Okay. I don't care. What's your name? I'm Don. Don, nice to meet you, Don. You know um, you I'm a friend of Russell's. You're a friend of Russell's? What's your yeah, last name? Don Moore. Don Martin from Boise, California. That's Boise, Idaho. California. They messed up. Oh, yes. Idaho. Nice. All right. Those are the questions. I was shaking well, my hand. We met Russell. Oh, sorry. I just... Basically, what he was telling him... We stand in front was, of him. We stand in the gap in front of the abortion in Boise, Idaho. I'm ready. Under local well, churches to do, to do the mission. And I know I heard what I heard what you said to him. I just I didn't recognize both of you. So I was like, oh, I want to see what they're talking about. Right? That's why I came over. Um, so, and um, Josiah was been at Patty's training. What well, well, was? Uh, so keep losing my train of thought. You know, um, back there. Well, you're talking about like shouldn't like in the meantime do well, things. Well, that was that was for you. She was just yeah, asking about my original question. Her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now I got two questions. It's okay. Go, you yeah. So basically, he was calling but you to come under we met the authority of local churches, the founding right? young man. Um, and, 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 and what I've seen is like yeah, like. Well, um, but what I've he seen, means, like, but he what he means by that, that in this specific context, what I t yeah. take him to mean, yeah. what I'm trying to get at, yeah. is he we, thinks we that coming under the authority of the local church, church meaning uh, means like if you go to someone else's local church, 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 church and give out information, oh, you have yeah. to get permission from but the we, elders, we're and that would be under the authority of the local church. Why? Where in the scriptures do I have to get the permission of somebody's elder to talk to them about Christianity? Nowhere. Yeah, that's a that's a extra biblical tradition of man so, that we reject. <coughs> so when it, when it comes to yeah, like the we, authority we of elders in general, um, how do you like how do you deal with like I'm not like, I don't know your position exactly. Um, how do you deal with the concept of of, of eldership uh, as as being an official as official role whereas I think whereas, you know I think you're like I think a lot of people in in your I don't know like in your camp I guess I'll just say for the sake of just in our call just say in our call I'm not gonna say call I'm not gonna say call not right now anyway no but well don't go say it to anybody in there when you start wasting but um so how do you deal with that because when do you what I've what I've what I've seen and what I've been told like when I've read about you like I see your posts I see T Russell Hunter's posts do you mean like at the local church I don't hope in Norman Oklahoma that I'm a part of or do you mean like within abolitionism in general I mean like at your local yeah. church, so okay. yeah, Door of Hope. I've so, seen that right. name. So we've exercised right. church discipline we do that. at I'm Door of Hope yeah, on sinless Except perfectionists no, no that were like or puffed up in pride because yeah, they wouldn't take correction. No, they wouldn't the question. listen question. to question. our corrections okay. of their theology, okay. the and they, they were want. teaching false when doctrine in in the church. And so we, you know, brought them in, called them to repentance. When is it repent? And this was after you know people tried to deal with them one on one and personally. And we I mean, just fellowship. It's like told you, we do not extend, right extend you the hand of fellowship. Um, we're not going to meet with you anymore. And one of them yeah. went out, and he was handed over to Satan. And he's gone completely insane. Like he's driving around with blindfolds over his eyes, saying he's the blind prophet. And then he's the first Christian Jewish Muslim. Like he went totally insane, man. Yeah. Um, like literally, you wouldn't even believe it. So, so but I'm saying, why we exercise church discipline, okay. and the men who are mature believers who can rightly divide the word of truth, who meet the qualifications that are laid out for elder in, in, in the pastoral epistles, those are the men who are recognized to have authority in the church. And our authority extends so far, in so far, not because we are a title holder or an office holder, but insofar as we handle the, the word of God rightly, 
Yeah, we've and done, we've if we step out of line and we like deviate from the authority of Jesus Christ in Scripture, then our authority is nothing. We don't have authority because we're recognized as the elder of the church, or because they, we have a name or an office. No, I our authority only no, extends in so far as we follow Jesus Christ and well, the appeal to His authority. Right? Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So like. I don't but have yeah. like an office in the building where we meet that says like Elder Harmon. I don't know. No, no, and obviously that. any like small that. church is not going to have that. I don't I'm think saying even don't, if we had a church this big, we wouldn't have that. Well, I'm, I don't think it's wrong to have an have office. That, like if you're being paid oh, I would to be an elder, like if you're a paid elder, like do you have a problem with that? Well, Sorry, I just kind of saw your face. No, I mean, okay. I think the Bible says that if somebody labors okay. at the work, I mean, I'm, Sorry, yeah, I'm I just, paid oh, in a sense to do the work of abolition. So no, I mean, I dare you. I'm, I don't have a problem with that necessarily. I okay. do think it, it can create problems. It's created like this professional clergy class. It's like distinct and like over and above like the lay people. But I think we're all priests and kings. But we should listen to mature believers who meet the qualifications of elder. And as men, we should all aspire to those qualifications. Yeah. Because that's a good thing. But I think it's organically recognizable. Who meets Sean those Gold. qualifications Sean the Baptist. by the way they function in relation to the Chuck local Lee. body they're a part of? And so, like, it's just obvious <laughs> who it is in our local fellowship. We, don't, we haven't named anybody, but everybody knows because of the way we carry out our function in the day-to-day interaction with members of our church okay does that make sense yeah i would does that um it sounds good i don't know like i mean I, like yeah, no i got you i, I haven't I had some elder that holds a title with an office lay hands on me from it's another sharp. local church and say you're an elder i don't need that all i need is to meet the qualifications laid out in the word of god to be able to guard against false doctrine within the church, yeah. and the people in our I, local I, church, I, I, could, I would, see, like, I could, see, I think I could see a danger with just the like a self-appointment, right? Like you have. I actually well, like, not a self-appointment. Like, the scripture appoints an elder. It's the scripture that appoints elders based upon meeting those qualifications. Now, Paul had to write to Timothy and say. Here's the qualifications, John, and you yeah. have to meet them. Yeah. And these men and fine men like that. And yeah. fine men like that See, recognize them. What I would say is right there, he's telling Timothy, you go find those men. Right. Well, yeah, at does that, that make sense? At that time, they didn't have the scripture either, though. That's they had true. the Old Testament. They didn't have the scripture. <laughs> That's true. But I would, like the I would, church of Laodicea didn't have the epistle to Timothy. I would still say you know having saying? sound men check you out to make sure that you are qualified. Yeah is a good thing i mean i don't right i don't think that's a bad thing yeah, i'm just saying okay. i don't have to have them like yeah i'm not i'm not I, just, I, just, I don't know if i agree with that i have to think about it that's fine okay um but, but, but yeah, no. we can disagree on that and still be brothers that's right? that's all right yeah no no okay. that's right um okay so now what about just you know teachers that fully are willing to call abortion murder. They call the woman is complicit in the murder. She's not a victim, uh, but they're they're unwilling to just do the same things you're doing. How like how do you respond to those guys? Well, like, and I think I just saw. Well, actually, no. He goes to abortion clinics too. But like, how do you respond to those guys that are fully in line with the fact that yes, it's murder. Um, their but their methodology. Is, is not the same, I guess. And I, I, I like, well, like, I mean, what methodology? Well, I mean, me, like, a specific yeah, I'm example. sorry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of, like, what, how, I'm trying to, like, phrase it well, and I'm, I don't think I'm doing a good job of that. Um, so basically, just like, okay, so, so, well, actually, like, maybe it's like, it's kind of close to home, but like, I feel like Amelia Ramos, who, who, preaches the gospel on the street at colleges, gets yelled at, gets screamed at by, you know, atheists all day. Um, he, he does abortion clinic stuff, not... He like, doesn't. No? But that's not necessarily important. Like, not well, everybody's required to okay. be an abortion clinic. Well, see, and, and, I, and so, so you say that, but then it seems like that's what the general... I would say, in general, Emilio Ramos's church ignores abortion. They don't... So, they, yes, they preach the gospel. They preach, like, a gospel message on the streets. The church has been doing that forever, and that's yeah. good. That's, like, a primary thing to do. 
but abolitionists think we should bring the gospel, the truths of the gospel. Yeah. And when we see there's a holocaust, we should bring those, like focus those things, the gospel, onto that holocaust in order to oppose it, rather than just merely preaching a generalized gospel message. You do both. I'm, I'm saying you don't have to like pick one or the other, but we should also bring the oh, truth of the gospel up front, huh? that Jesus Christ is king back, and that everything front? in rebellion to him ought to bow its knee no, to his right. kingship and obey him, right? Yeah. And so we say like, bring the truth, the good news that Jesus Christ is king, that he is Lord, and that he has provided a way to God. Bring that to focus like on child sacrifice, specifically. Yeah. But it, how come abortion flourishes when we have gospel preaching churches all over the place? It's because we don't bring the gospel into direct conflict with child sacrifice. We just, we pay child sacrifice lip service once a year. We act as though it's not as bad as it is. We think it's, we pretend like it's a political thing to deal with and the church is supposed to be political. And we, the, we say things like keep the main thing the main thing. And I heard that brother just that I was talking to, he told me, keep the main thing the main thing. What that says is that you have to preach the gospel and that primarily, now he actually contradicted saying that because he said, no, we should do both. But he's like, yeah, we got to keep the main thing the main thing. As though you can't elevate the gospel to a level of importance the highest level and also love your neighbor as yourself as a high level of importance because here's the thing ever since i've been doing the work of abolition whether it's standing outside yeah, abortion clinics, abortion. whether it's like later on we're going to be in a downtown area holding graphic images and handing out information i will share the gospel more today than probably anyone in this building because i'm out there bringing the gospel in the conflict with child sacrifice yeah. Yeah, and i actually like I'm fully like I'm actually fully on board with the street stuff. Yeah, I guess. Sure. Oh, I'm sure. Like, oh, like I, everyone in like, here. Well, I mean, I even mean like the like the signage. I guess. Yeah. Like I, honestly, like I am like I don't have any problem with any of that. Um, I've even seen like I remember like a couple years ago. One thing that really changed my mind after was just a train. Um, uh, there was a picture of a, of a mother showing her his soft kid picture because like. Children inherently understand that's a baby. They actually have to be trained that it's not, right? So and I fully, I know I, that. I, all that. I just, I am concerned. Yeah. Like even if you're not saying it's a protest, um, it, it, it seems like, and it appears like that's what you're doing to churches that preach the gospel, send people out who just in their daily lives understand that abortion is murder, and that's going to come up in the normal flow of things, especially when you have the resource. Planned Parenthood logo, like I couldn't. We, we saw one. That was like the first time I seen one in person, right? And it's just like a big, big signage, right? Like in, in where I'm from, they, they hide it. Like, it's still that's like what we do. It's called I mean, I show you this map. Does it fit so, so well with what you're yeah. saying? I mean, this is what Tony's saying. Oh, it's like, these are all the white dots, those are churches. Yeah, just in this area. Yeah. And, the, and the red ones yeah. are the portion. Yeah. They're all gospel yes. preaching yeah. churches. Yeah. They, yeah, like, preach the gospel being, to lost people. Like, you haven't yeah. included, like... No, there's Catholic churches that aren't in there. No Mormon is. Like, if you have a church, like, Christian church, Mormons will come up. Those have all been eliminated. I stand right here. These are all Orthodox churches. Yeah, right here, every Wednesday, and we have... Have yeah, a Grace to You Church plant here, Cornerstone, right. Milton Vincent. So. You're probably familiar with him. Yeah. We've got <laughs> there was I, was gonna ask. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're Russell. lucky to oh. have five I was going to do a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. does it look like yeah. in a culture yeah. that murders It definitely children. looks like more than five Christians being yeah. at the I, I, I understand what you're saying. And I'm not what saying everybody needs to go to the clinic. I think it Okay. And see, I think that, like, not the that's a misconception. It is. But here's why that happens. I don't think that. Because people will say, well, what do you want me to do? Why do you think the church is guilty of apathy? And so we're like, well, okay, so we got to give you a specific so. example that we can point to, yeah. put our finger on and demonstrate. And so we say, look at that. <laughs> See, there's nobody at the clinic. And then the, I want they to automatically interpret it and say, okay, okay. 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 I know what you're saying. So, so here's my thing. <laughs> so what about just the fact that, you know, People are being discipled, they're being taught. Um, they're, they're really, like, we're talking about real converts, right? Okay, let's just put in the context of real converts being sent out. Like, whether there's false converts in the church or not, obviously, I think every church has them, okay? 
So those real believers are going out, they're believing the gospel, they're being sent to their normal jobs, and just in their normal daily life are willing to tell people, like, no, plan B is murdering your baby. I don't think people right? really doing are doing that. that. Okay. I don't think they're doing it. So look, in, so, yeah, in the I book do. of James, it says I to be do. careful not to be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. He was talking to yeah, believers. Now there's probably some unbelievers and believers. So it, there can be believers I mean, so that like, become hearers of the word, but not doers. So like, I, I think there's a lot of hearers like at this conference and the, in the churches and the pastors of this See, conference who aren't really doers. See, I, I, I just, I, 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 I you know, my initial here, response is, I think you're wrong yeah. about that. Like, um, it, like I'll get like I think what honestly, like I think that if I was wrong, if, why does the culture look like yeah, it I, 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 I okay, let, so just hear me out. So I think that like my church in Edmonton, if there were, if there were an abolitionist ch like right chapter, here. is that what you want to call it? Is that work? Like, society, like, like a society, society. Sorry, society. I feel like they would. They would come to our church and make the same assumption about the people there. So many times, I probably, and, I don't and my general assumption is is that if abortion comes up in in a conversation, you need to be willing to say what it is to people. Right. And I I am personally, right. and I would say like a lot of the people in my church. I'm not saying everyone is. I'm like we and we. I would say like. You know, that's the rule. But right right now, there's a young man yeah. sitting in the you car. You said if abortion us. comes up, like right. so not abortion saying, yeah. has to come up no, before no, I'm going to no, even no, acknowledge no, it. No, that's not what. It, yeah, it's no. like it's like no. saying like yeah. your wife is being yeah. raped. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. someone's yeah. being yeah. raped, yeah. and you and your brother are walking down the sidewalk talking about yeah. theology. Yeah. And it's like, well, if he says something about it, no, then I'll say something no, no, about no. It. that's that's terrible. But like, we're not actually thinking of the Holocaust like a Holocaust. We're just thinking it's like that's this thing that happens. And it's kind of just another aspect of like ministry, and it's something that like certain people are especially called to do. And so like, if my neighbor, or my coworker brings up abortion, then I'll talk about it. We're saying no, we should be shouting about it more regularly, and like actually acting like there's a Holocaust. And we're saying that the church is not acting in general, and for the most part, as though children are being murdered. So if tomorrow. When, or Sunday when people come here to, to go to church, um, 50 children in the children's ministry were going to be slaughtered while they listen to MacArthur preach. Do you think it would be a proper response to sit there through the sermon? Like, well, I really want to hear what MacArthur has to say about limited atonement today. No! We would raise the alarm. And nobody would think we were a cult if we were out here, but we weren't allowed in. We're like, guys, they're murdering children yes. in your nursery. I understand right? the analogy. It's, it's, like, I get what you're saying, but we are supposed to sit under sound teaching. No? Oh, yeah. I'm not saying okay. don't do that. Right. So, and see, so when you give the analogy, it seems like you're saying we should not spend Sunday at church. We should yeah. use that time to go to abortion. Was it? No, no, no. Also, like that's abortion clinics aren't even open. Like, okay, oh, I don't, I don't I, know. I'm trying to I, paint. I'm trying to yeah, paint a picture just, of how serious the Holocaust I, I is. I think what it is, and how non-serious we I, take it. I think what it, yeah, I, like, and I. It's not a perfect. I generally analogy. agree with that, right? Okay, and see what I think is is when those un, when those non-perfect analogies. Yeah. Are presented. Yeah, she's like, people well, see that and they and they and oh. it just misinterpret. Is, well, hold on. is it because they want it to be? I would, I would hope not. Is it because they I hope want to find something right. to get us on? Because they don't actually want to hear the message of repentance that we have. See, for like, I, get, like, I think that's part of it. Bro. Like, it could be. I like. I guess my thing is like I saw like um, it was a couple of years ago that like I saw like this abolitionist stuff and I was like, what is this? A girl. She was seventeen. It's interesting. There's people that actually seem to care. I I just become a believer like two years before that. I've been, I've been a Christian for like six years. Okay. And, and I remember seeing this stuff and I um, someone I asked someone like, hey, what is this logo? Right. Okay. It's a symbol. And so I'm okay. Sorry. But I, I, I it's actually an important distinction. But it's okay. Go I ahead. understand. <laughs> but like I said, what is that image that is your profile pic? And then they basically um, like messaged me to, to Russell Hunter, and then he basically put a thing on his Facebook page with my name, and I got like 200 abolitionists. At. So I've had tons of people on Facebook already saying abolitionist things for a long time. Okay, so what I like, and I just. I see an almost like a depreciation of, of sound teaching in 
Right. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, I see this, and I'm not saying it's you. I know. Okay? We're not against sound teaching. We They're getting ready to leave, so I want to talk to Toby before he goes. You've dominated the whole afternoon. Can I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Here, you, okay. Yeah, here. Go ahead. I'm starving. I don't want to give them.